begin with a fatal shooting of a rap music legend. The shooting tonight in a recording studio in Queens, taking the life of the man known as Jam Master J. His real name, Jason Mizell. The Jam Master J case is heating up. New evidence has surfaced that allegedly the same person that took out Jay took out Big Stretch as well. Let's get into it. Jam Master J was gunned down more than two decades ago as revenge for cutting somebody out of a drug deal. Carl Jordan Jr., 40, and Ronald Washington, 59, are the ones accused. In the opening statements on Monday, prosecutors claim the pair carried out an execution that was motivated by greed and revenge. However, their lawyers told the jury that wasn't the case. Jam Master J, whose real name is Jason Mazzell, was shot in his head at the recording studio in Queens, New York in October 2022. He was one third to run DMC, the influential hip hop group known for 1980s tracks such as Tricky, It's Like That, and Aerosmith's collaboration, Walked His Way. They spoke out against drug culture, even recording a Just Say No public service announcement in 1988. What's up, we run DMC, and our rap's about something which there's no doubt. When it comes to drugs, just say no. We've teamed up with the Drug Enforcement Administration and millions of people who won't fool with drugs. Not now, not ever. Who wants to be involved with something that can rob you of your job, your future, your self-respect, your family, even your life? Nobody does. That's why, when drugs are concerned, the only thing to do is just say no. But prosecutors said that Jay had become involved as a middleman in a cocaine deal to support his lifestyle and those of others close to him as the group's music career faded. They said Jordan Jr., who was 18 at the time, and Washington, a friend who was staying with Jay's sister, thought they would be a part of a deal worth nearly 200,000, and they were angered when they were cut out. So they plotted to take him out after being left with nothing, says Miranda Gonzalez, a US state attorney. On the night of the incident, Jay was sitting on the couch playing video games at his 24 seven studio on Merrick Boulevard. Gonzalez said the famous DJ had a 380 caliber pistol on the armrest of the sofa, fearing for his safety after a visit from Washington earlier in the day. People close to Jay say he seemed different in the days leading up to his demise, she told the jury. Jay Bryant, 49, who was indicted separately for his role in the killing, led Jordan and Washington into the studio through a rear entrance to the fire escape, according to the accusations. They say Jay rose to his feet upon seeing Jordan enter the studio, who prosecutors said then put a 40 caliber bullet in his head, taking him out instantly. And Gonzalez noted that the fatal shot was fired at such a close range that it burnt the hair and skin on his head. Prosecutors also noted Jordan's callous indifference about the execution, claiming he later made statements that if Jay was still alive, he would take him out again. Lawyers for the defense briefly addressed the court for claiming their client's innocence and casting doubt on the reliability of the eyewitness testimony of the more than 20 year old crime. This whole case revolves around 10 seconds, 21 years ago, a blink of an eye a generation ago, said Ezra Spilk, Washington's attorney. Spilk also went on to say that Washington and Jay were like family. He conceded that his client was an alcoholic at the time who would frequently crash on his couch. If that's the case, why about the hand to feed you? Why take out the person that you depend on? I got to visit and my man that drove me up there, he ain't got the call that Jay got shot. Nigga didn't say Jay got shot. And I said, what? I said, go, go, go to Queens now. I don't, we're on New York Thruway. I think it was coming from Greenhaven or, or one of them jails upstate. It wasn't far. And I told him, press on it. And I, when I got to Queens, when I got to Queens, you know, it started drizzling. It started drizzling. And I said, Jay's dead. And um, when I got the car, Five minutes later, I seen Leo, everybody was on the block, rapping, everybody's out there. And um, I seen them bring the bodies out. Ronald Washington and Carl Jordan Jr., who happens to be the godson yeah, yeah, of G M Master J. Yeah, it's big I guess son. I guess this was uh Run DMC's bodyguard's son? No, he wasn't a bodyguard. He was a um he was a road manager. Okay, road That's manager. Because okay. Leo Cohn became the road manager. He got he, it. He's the road manager. Yeah, and I mean, Carl Jordan Jr., on his Instagram page, he's sitting next to Jam Master J Mural, so I'm like, yo, I miss my man, and rest in peace, and everything else like that. And you come to find out that this is one of the two dudes that allegedly killed him. Yeah. Yeah, but... And you heard that. I heard it, and I and I know him. I know him. You know both those guys, or just Carl? I know the other guy, you know, because the night, the night when I went to Jay's house, 
before you know for the wake and all that we go you pay respect he was there wait 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 carl jordan jr the guy who's charged with killing jam master yeah, jay the other one went oh oh uh ronald washington tonight he was there he goes to jam master jay's wake he was no he goes to his house he was living in jay's he house house he was living in his sister's house i mean the story that's coming out around this was that uh jam master jay had overextended himself uh, he had been, he's paying a lot of money for his family members and, and trying to really kind of maintain a lifestyle. And he started to hustle on the side. And essentially they're saying that this was essentially a drug deal that didn't work out. And it was retaliation for that. When you heard that story, does it sound believable or do you think it's all bullshit? I think it's bullshit because I never knew Jay to sell drugs. You know what I mean? He, 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 he had groups. He can pay for all his groups. Come on, he created Onyx. He signed 50. He had papers. He, he he owned his own studio. You know, I think, like I said before, you gotta be careful with dudes printing this narrative to hide themselves. You know what I'm saying? To hide themselves. Also testifying in court was Detective James Lusk. Lusk testified that in the moments that followed, Randy Allen, a business partner of Jay, who had been present for the shooting, sprinted across a large municipal parking lot separating the studio from the precinct to report the crime. Upon arriving at the studio about a minute later, Lusk found Jay unresponsive, lying on the ground in a huge pool of blood. And Allen's sister, Lydia Hyde, who identified the shooter to the police nine months after the crime, was crying hysterically. Jurors were then shown photos of the crime scene, which included bloody pictures of Jay's body, wearing white socks and a beige sweater, laying on the floor next to the couch with a PlayStation 2 video game controller nearby. Lusk said he was unaware of whether any photos were taken at the time, and Washington's lawyer, Jacqueline Castaro, questioned why none of the five people in the studio at the time of the murder called 911. To be continued.